guys, how's it going? TJ here with Dead History, and I'm here today with Mr. Henry. Hello. And first and foremost, before we even get into our video, yes. what do we have to do? Wish the people... A Happy New Year. Happy New Year. You're a little confused. Happy New Year. Happy 2023. I hope it was a very happy and safe holiday for everyone, and I hope everyone has a wonderful year ahead of them, right? Yes. We got a lot of big things coming up, don't we? Yeah. A lot of big things, a lot of announcements coming, so stay tuned for that. So here we go, our next Declaration of Independence Signer Series, and today we're actually looking at the guy behind us. Who is that, Henry? Edward Rutledge. Yep, you got it, Edward Rutledge. And he's from the state of? South Carolina. South Carolina, we're on to a new state, South Carolina. He's our first signer we're doing from South Carolina. So before we get into Edward Rutledge, we've got a lot of cool things to tell you about him. First though, Henry, we wish the people a happy new year. What do they got to do now? Hit subscribe down below, leave all your comments and questions, uh, leave a like, and hit the bell. There you go, you got it. Hit subscribe down below, comments, questions, leave them. Give us a like and a thumbs up. And of course, hit that little notification bell so you can be notified when we do release a new video. And Henry, when is it? Every single week. Every single week. Yes, that's right. Here we go. Declaration of Independence Cider Series, Edward Rutledge, and this is Dead History. Hey guys, TJ back with you here with Henry. And behind us is our first South Carolina Declaration of Independence signer. And what's his name, Henry? Edward Rutledge. Edward Rutledge. Some cool things to tell you about Rutledge. First and foremost, he was the, do you have any idea, Henry? He did something pretty significant when it came to the signing. Well, if you're not the oldest, you're the that's right. He was the youngest signer of the Declaration of Independence, supposedly. It's kind of in conflict with another, uh, I believe, Georgia signer. We already covered that. Uh, but according to historians, he is the youngest. 26 years old, I believe, only. Yeah. He was only 26 years old when he signed the Declaration. And some very cool things about Rutledge. He was born in South Carolina. He lived in South Carolina. He was a South Carolinian through and through. And some not so nice things even about it were Rutledge. And we're going to get into that, of course, right? All right. So they did the likes, the subscribes, comments, questions. They did it all. Now, Henry, what do they got to go get? The popcorn, the pretzels, the potato chips, the soda. All the leftover New Year yeah. stuff, right? From oh, the parties? Yeah. All the snacks and all that stuff from New Year's. Go get your snacks. Go get your Doritos. drinks. The Doritos? Yeah, all right. There you go. Doritos. You got pretty excited about Doritos. You were yawning a minute ago. Now you're all jumping up and down about Doritos. All right. Here we go. Declaration of Independence Signer Series. Edward Rutledge. Sit back. Relax. And enjoy. And enjoy. Hey, guys. How's it going? TJ here with Dead History, and welcome to our next installment of our Declaration of Independence Signer Series, as we're taking a look at our very first signer from the state of South Carolina, Edward Rutledge. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed their holiday season. Uh, it's hard to believe it's already 2023, uh, and here we are, picking right back up with our Declaration of Independence Signer Series, and as I said, our very first today will be Edward Rutledge of South Carolina. Now, uh, a couple things that I did want to go over, some housekeeping items, if you will. So, of course, uh, I'm sure as many of you already know that follow our channel and, of course, follow us on our Instagram at DeadHistory1776 on Instagram. Uh, if you don't follow, please go ahead and do so. Uh, but I'm sure all of you know that uh, this Friday, 
January 13th of 2023 at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, there will be a Dead History Trivia live stream. Dead History Trivia Part 3. So yes, it's going to be very exciting. Uh, we're really looking forward to it. Part 3 we're already up to with our uh, trivia live stream contest tonight. night. Uh, we have a great lineup of participants. Uh, Mr. B. We have product, Project POTUS Pages, Zachary Taylor Project, uh, Historical USA, Lisa, uh, Kurt Dion, Don Blaze. We, I mean, it's a it, bunch of them. It's going to be great. Uh, we can't wait. So like I said, that'll be this Friday, January 13th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, live on our YouTube channel here, uh, Dead History YouTube channel. Now, if you can't catch us live, keep in mind, you will be able to watch. Uh, it'll be up on our uh, YouTube, of course, right afterward. So please uh, take a look. It's going to be a lot of fun. We always have a blast with those. Uh, and then on top of that, we're going to be having uh, at least two more live streams coming up. Uh, one is going to be a very exciting live stream where we're going to be doing a live interview with uh, a very, very interesting author. Uh, so please stay tuned for that announcement. Uh, and then there's uh, there may even be a little hint, hint. There may even be a... Uh, another ranking live stream coming up. You know, you guys have seen me do uh, live streams where I rank and rate and grade the uh, different, you know, president's grave sites and presidents and all those different things with special guests that usually are on there with me. Um, so stay tuned. There, there may be another one of them coming up pretty soon. So lots coming uh, up. Uh, lots we're excited about. Uh, and last but not least, from our housekeeping items, a very, very special video is going to be released probably within the next week here on our YouTube channel. And it is a video that is going to be covering and going over uh, the entire trip that Henry and I made uh, when we visited and took a tour of the White House. So that is going to be coming up very soon as well. Uh, we had a lot of people ask us uh, if we were going to do a video uh, about our tour and visit to the White House. The answer is yes, and it's coming up very soon. So uh, with all that being said, uh, without further ado, as they say, let's get right into it. Let's get into our next Declaration of Independence Signer Series video uh, taking a look at the first one from the state of South Carolina, Edward Rutledge. Here we go. Edward Rutledge was born in Charleston, South Carolina on November 23rd of 1749. He was the youngest son of Dr. John Rutledge, who emigrated from Ireland to South Carolina about the year 1735. A diligent Rutledge family historian on the internet has ascertained that Edward was the grandson of Thomas Rutledge, who lived in Kalin or Callan County, Kilkenny, Ireland, about 65 miles southwest of Dublin. Edward's mother was Sarah Hurt, a lady of respectable family and large fortune. Sarah's grandfather, Hugh Hext, came to South Carolina from Dorsetshire, England, about 1686. Sarah's father, also named Hugh, left to his dearly beloved and only daughter substantial lands inherited from the Fenwick family, two homes in Charleston, a 550-acre plantation at Stono and 640 acres on St. Helens in Granville County. Not a lot is known about the early years of Edward Rutledge, but we do know that he was placed under the tutelage of David Smith, 
who instructed him in the learned languages. He was not a brilliant student, but his skill as an orator later in his life perhaps is due in part to this early experience. After this education, Edward read law with his elder brother John, who was already a distinguished member of the Charleston Bar. When Edward was 20 years of age, he sailed for England and became a student of law at the temple. He had the experience there of listening to some of the most distinguished orators of the day, in court and in parliament, a precursor to his later ability. The temple in London was an ancient institution for teaching law founded by the Knights Templar in the reign of Henry II in 1185. The inner temple where Edward studied became an inn of law in the reign of Edward III about 1340. The temple was a prominent source for teaching law to many famous South Carolinians, including Edward's uncle, Andrew Rutledge, Edward's, bro Edward's brothers, John and Hugh, Arthur Middleton, Thomas Lynch Jr., Thomas Hayward Jr., and several members of the Pinckney family. Pinckney family. Very prominent uh, historical revolutionary uh, time period figures. Rutledge returned to Charleston in 1773 to practice law. He quickly gained recognition as a patriot when he successfully defended a printer, Thomas Powell, who had been imprisoned by the Crown for printing an article critical of the Loyalist Upper House of the Colonial Legislature. Despite his youth, he was only 24 at the time, he earned a reputation for his quickness of apprehension, fluency of speech, and graceful delivery. Soon after he established his law practice, Edward married Henrietta Middleton, the sister of Arthur Middleton, who would also sign the Declaration of Independence. The couple had a son and a daughter, and a third child who died as an infant. After the death of his first wife in 1792, Rutledge married Mary Shubreck Evely, a young widow. This marriage continued the inner relationship among the signers of the Declaration, since two of Mary Shubrick's sisters had married signers of the Declaration. One married Thomas Hayward Jr. and one married Thomas Lynch Jr. Henrietta's great-grandfather was Edward Middleton, who was born in 1620 and came to the Barbados in 1635 on the Dorset and settled in South Carolina in 1678. He was Lord Proprietor's deputy, assistant justice, and a member of the Grand Council from 1678 to 1684. Henrietta's grandfather, the Honorable Ralph Izzard, was born in England and came to South Carolina in 1682. Rutledge enjoyed a happy home life and public success in the succeeding years. He was first elected to the Continental Congress and the South Carolina House of Representatives. In both bodies, his increasing self-confidence and maturation of judgment brought him the esteem of the delegates. And as always, I'm going to be reading from different sources. So some things may be repeated, but I'll try to do my best not to too much. The fifth son and youngest child of an Irish immigrant and physician, Edward Rutledge was born in 1749 in Charleston, South Carolina. Like Middleton, Lynch, and Hayward, the other South Carolina signers of the Declaration of Independence, as a young man, he studied law in England. In 1773, during his first year of practice on his return to Charleston, 
he won Whig acclaim by obtaining the release of newspaper publisher Thomas Powell, who had been imprisoned by the Crown for printing an article critical of the upper house of the colonial legislature. The next year, Whigs named Rutledge as one of five delegates to the First Continental Congress. He married Henrietta Middleton, his colleague's sister. The Rutledges had three children. Edward Rutledge was born on November 23rd of 1749 in Charleston, South Carolina. He was the youngest of seven children. This one says, when he was old enough, he uh, lie his brothers before him, studied law in England, in London, at Inns of Court. In 1772, he passed the English foo. Shortly thereafter, he returned to Charleston to start practicing law. And on March 1st of 1774, he married Henrietta Middleton, sister of Arthur Middleton. Her wealthy father's political connections would advance Edward's career and make him the youngest member of Congress. The couple had three children together, one of whom died as an infant. Henrietta died in 1792, and he remarried, but he and his previously widowed second wife, Mary Shubrick Evely, were childless. When arriving back at Charleston, Edward Rutledge had started a law firm with Charles Coatsworth Pinckney. The firm had taken off and made the two men very successful. It wasn't long before Rutledge was one of the leading citizens in Charleston and owned quite a bit of land and almost 50 slaves. I'm going to read uh, now from that older source that I used, that one that, again, I believe it was written in the 1800s. Edward Rutledge the first of the South Carolina delegation who affixed his name to the Declaration of Independence was born in the city of Charleston, November of 1749. He was the youngest son of Dr. John Rutledge who emigrated from Ireland to South Carolina about the year 1755. His mother was Sarah Hurt, a lady of respectable family and large fortune. At the age of 27, she became a widow with seven children. Her eldest son was John Rutledge, distinguished for his patriotic zeal during the revolution. Her youngest son was the subject of the present memoir. Of the early years of Edward Rutledge, we have little to record. He was placed under the care of David Smith of New Jersey, by whom he was instructed in the learned languages, but he appears not to have made as rapid attainments as some others, although as a scholar he was respectable. Before he had devoted as much time to academic studies as would have been desirable, he commenced the study of law with his elder brother, who at that time was becoming the most eminent advocate at the Charleston Bar. Although at this time he was still young, he was capable of appreciating the advantages which he enjoyed and was strongly impelled to exertion by the brilliant and successful example which his brother held constantly before him. In 1769, at the age of 20 years, he sailed for England to complete his legal education. He became a student at the temple. He derived great advantage from an attendance upon the English courts and houses of parliament. In in the latter place, he had an opportunity of listening to the eloquence of some of the most distinguished orators who lived at that day. In 1773, he returned to his native country and entered upon the duties of his profession. He was at this time distinguished for his quickness of apprehension, fluency of speech, and graceful delivery. Hence, he early excited the admiration of those who heard him and gave promise of that future eminence to which he was destined to arrive. 
The general esteem in which he was held was evidenced in 1774 by his appointment to the Distinguished Congress, which assembled at Philadelphia in that year. He was at this time but 25 years of age. It was a high honor for so young a man to be called to serve in the National Council with men of exalted powers and preeminent experience. It furnished unquestionable proof of the estimation in which he was held and strong presumptive evidence that this estimation of his talents and moral worth was not unjust. Another source here, Edward Rutledge was born in Charleston, South Carolina on November 23rd of 1749 to Dr. John and Sarah Wirt Rutledge. Edward was the youngest of seven children. His father had emigrated from Ireland during 1735 and established his residence and practice in Charleston. Earlier, his brother Andrew, a lawyer, had also arrived in Charleston from Ireland. Andrew, Edward's uncle, married Sarah Boone Hext, the widow of Hugh Hext, a planter, and the daughter of Captain John and Elizabeth Patey Boone of Boone Hall Plantation on Boone Hall Creek in Christchurch Parish, Charleston County. Dr. Rutledge, who arrived about five years after his older brother, married his brother's stepdaughter, Sarah Hext, the daughter of his sister-in-law and her late husband, Hugh. John and Sarah had seven children, including Edward, the youngest, and Thomas. Through their marriages, John and Andrew accumulated sizable properties. However, Dr. John Rutledge died while Edward was a young boy, leaving his Sarah to raise the children. Nonetheless, Edward, like his older brother Thomas, received an excellent education. Edward completed his education in England and returned to Charleston during 1772. He began to practice law during 1773 after he'd been admitted to the bar. It had been Edward's plan to wed Mary Shubrick, but her father was against the marriage. In 1774, he married Henrietta Middleton, the daughter of Henry Middleton and the brother of Arthur Middleton. The latter, like Edward, would sign the Declaration of Independence. Edward and Henrietta would have three children together. However, Henrietta, beca Henrietta became ill while still a young mother and was never able to participate as a partner in her husband's political life. She lived an extremely quiet life until her death during 1792. Two of their children, Henry Middleton and Sarah, survived her. Edward Rutledge was born in Charleston, South Carolina. He was the youngest of seven children, five sons and two daughters, born to Dr. John Rutledge and Sarah Hext. His father was a physician and colonist of Scots-Irish descent. His mother was born in South Carolina and was of English descent. Following his brothers John and Hugh, he studied law in London at the Inns of Court. In 1772, he was admitted to the English bar, Middle Temple, and returned to Charleston to practice. He was married on March 1st of 1774 to Henrietta Middleton daughter of Henry Middleton. The couple had three children. Major Henry Middleton Rutledge, born April 5th, 1775. Edward Rutledge, born on March 20th of 1778. And Sarah Rutledge, born in 1782. Rutledge had a successful law practice with his partner, Charles Coatsworth Pinckney. He became a leading citizen of Charleston, South Carolina. Edward Rutledge owned more than 50 enslaved people. Edward Rutledge, lawyer, patriot, 
governor of South Carolina, was educated in Charleston and studied law with his brother John. In 1767, he was admitted as a law student at the Middle Temple of the Inns of Court, University of Cambridge, London. He was admitted to the English Bar in 1772 and returned to Charleston. Rutledge began to practice law in January of 1773 and among his earliest clients was Thomas Powell, publisher of the South Carolina Gazette. Powell was in prison because he had printed the Gazette on unstamped paper. Rutledge was successful in winning Powell's freedom. Just a little bit more about genealogy. Edward Rutledge, youngest child of Dr. John and Sarah Hext Rutledge, was born in or near Charleston, South Carolina on November 23rd of 1749. He married first on March 1st of 1774, Henrietta Middleton, by whom he had three children. He married second on October 28th of 1792, Mary, Mary Shubrick Evely, or Evely, widow of Nicholas. She was born on November 15th of 1753, and she died on October 22nd of 1837. Um, his children were by his first wife, Henry of 1775 born, Sarah 1777 born, and this says unnamed child died by second wife, none. Uh, let me see here. Dr. John Rutledge was born in 1720 in Ireland and came with his brother Andrew to South Carolina in 1735. He was married by the Reverend Robert Small on December 25th of 1738 to Sarah Hext. Born September 18th, baptized October 18th of 1724, and died April 22nd of 1792. So, uh, it seems like uh, Edward's mom, Sarah Hext, she was actually baptized at least October 18th. That's Henry's birthday. Uh, Sarah was the daughter of Hugh and Sarah Boone Hext. Their first child, John Rutledge, 1739-1800, was the first state governor of South Carolina. He was born when Sarah had turned just 15 years of age. Dr. John Rutledge died on Christmas Day in 1750 on their 12th wedding anniversary. So that's pretty crazy. His mother and father's 12th wedding anniversary uh, his father, Dr. John Rutledge, died on that day. He was buried at Charleston on December 27th, leaving her with seven young children. Sarah Hext was the only child of Hugh and Sarah Boone Hext, whose, let's see what it says here, whose marriage was recorded as Hugh Hicks married Sarah Boone November 21st of 1723. The will of Hugh Hex, gentleman of Berkeley County, was made November 23rd of 1732 and recorded February of 1732 or 1733, giving his wife Sarah Hex for life use and benefits of all lands given him by the will of Sarah Fenwick, deceased, providing she used the profits arising therefrom to provide for and educate the testators daughter Sarah Hext, his dearly beloved and only daughter. Sarah received this in two homes in Charleston, a 550-acre plantation at Stono and 640 acres on St. Helens in Granville County. Mr. Hex died and was buried November 29th of 1732. His widow Sarah Boone Rutledge married second Andrew Rutledge, Esquire, attorney at law and brother of Dr. John Rutledge. She was the daughter of Major John and Elizabeth Patty Boone. She was buried on Tuesday, October 22nd 
1743 under her own pew in the church, according to the register of Christ Church Parish. Hugh Hex Gentleman, who died in November of 1732, was the son of Hugh and Mary Hext, who came to South Carolina from Dorsetshire, England, about 1686. So there's the genealogy. Um, talks a little bit more. The Middletons, Henrietta Middleton was the daughter of Henry and Mary Williams Middleton. And she died on April 22nd of 1792. She was the sister of Arthur Middleton, the signer. Henrietta Middleton's ancestry can be found in the genealogy section uh, of this source I'm reading on Arthur Middleton. Shubrick, Mary Shubrick Evely, November 15, 1753 to October 22nd of 1837, was the daughter of Thomas and Mary Baker Shubrick of Charleston, South Carolina and Savannah, Georgia. Her sister Elizabeth married Thomas Lynch Jr., and sister Hannah married William, brother of Thomas Hayward Jr. Thomas Shubrick was one of the largest bondholders of the South Carolina debt. Two loans estate Thomas Shubrick, uh, February 3rd uh, through the 24th, 1780, uh, were in the total amount of 136,050 pounds. He was a merchant of Charleston and with his brother and others owned several ships. So there you go. That's kind of a real in-depth look of his genealogy. Uh, Edward Rutledge, that is. So uh, with all this being said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, believe it or not, that's going to do it for part one. Uh, you know, there's as I read a few from a few sources, there's just not a whole lot of information on Edward Rutledge in his early life. Uh, of course, we know about him going over to England and studying and practicing law and becoming admitted to the English bar. But other than that, there's not a whole lot. So uh, that's pretty much it. Now, the interesting thing is I know I read a few sources that said uh, that the, the man who uh, basically taught uh, Edward Rutledge, uh, um, his name right this second is escaping me, uh, but he was from New Jersey. Now I looked, I want to say it was David Smith, maybe might've been David Smith. Yes, it was David Smith of New Jersey. He's the one that instructed Edward in the learned languages. Um, he was, I guess like a private tutor kind of teacher. I searched high and low to try to find any information on this David Smith of New Jersey, there's nothing. I mean, I'm sure there might be something out there, but when you look kind of just, you know, just trying to find information, even genealogy information, I could not find anything. Of course, Smith is a very, very common last name. The, I believe it's the most common in the uh, United States, either that or Jones, I believe. Um, so it's really hard because I was hoping I could find some information about the man and hoping to maybe even uh, find out if he was like buried in New Jersey where I could go visit a gravesite of his, but to no such luck. Now, uh, one more thing I want to end with here. Edward Rutledge is a little bit of an interesting thing for me because I stood, no exaggeration, probably only about 15 yards, maybe 20 yards tops. I don't even, I got to be honest. I don't even think it was 20 yards. I think it's more like 10 or 15 yards away from his grave. But unfortunately down in Charleston, the cemetery he's buried at, the gate was locked both times I was there in 2020 during the pandemic. It was closed. There was no visitors. It was all locked. There was no way for me to like jump the, the gate or the fence uh, you'll see my pictures, though, from it in part two uh, in bonus footage. But as far as bonus footage here for part one, I don't have anything for you guys. Uh, we'll definitely have some bonus footage in part two, uh, but nothing right now for you guys in part one. So there you go, guys. The early life of our first South Carolina signer of the Declaration of Independence, Edward Rutledge. Uh, stay tuned, of course, tomorrow 
for part two, where we're going to go over his time in the Continental Congress, signing of the Declaration of Independence, and then his life afterward, uh, and then, of course, his death and his burial site. We will go over all that, of course, tomorrow in part two. I hope you enjoyed this look at Edward Rutledge. And, uh, yeah, stay tuned for part two. And then, of course, stay tuned for this Friday night, Dead History Trivia Part 3 live stream at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Looking forward to it. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks for all the subscribes, the likes, the comments, the questions. Thank you for all your patience uh, in giving us a few weeks off here for the holidays. Again, Happy New Year to everyone out there. And we will see you tomorrow for our conclusion and part two. Thanks, guys. See you tomorrow.